Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about the basic rules of derivatives. So if you remember from the previous video, we talked about how to calculate the derivative using the limit of the difference quotient for a variety of different functions. We had linear functions, quadratic functions, rational functions, radical functions. If this limit exists, then that was what the derivative was actually equal to. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero, f of x plus h, subtract f of x all divided by h, and this part without the limit was called the difference quotient. But if you have a limit as h approaches zero, then you get what's called the derivative. So over the next several sections, we're going to calculate basic differentiation rules because we do not want to use the definition for the derivative using the limit every single time. So in this video, we're going to talk about the various notation forms when finding the derivative. And then we're going to have several different differentiation rules that we can use to find the derivative. We're going to have the constant function rule, the power rule, the constant multiple property, and then also the sum and difference properties. We'll be able to use all of those rules to find the derivative for a variety of functions. So let's talk about basic differentiation rules. We're going to start off with the simplest rule, which is called the constant function rule. So we're not going to prove these results. We're going to simply use these differentiation rules to define the derivative of a function without using the limit of the difference quotient every single time. So, however, we're going to look at a few differentiation rules so that we can see why they make sense. So let's start off with the first rule. This is for constant functions. So your function is just a constant real number. So if f of x equals k and k is a constant or a real number, it says the derivative f prime of x is always equal to zero. So this differentiation rule states that the derivative of a constant function is zero. And we saw that in the previous section. So example one, constant function rule. Find the derivative of the following functions. Number one, f of x equals 10. Notice that 10 is just a real number or a constant. So f prime of x is zero. Number two, if you have a function g of x equals 135, it doesn't matter how large the number is, it's still just a constant. So the derivative g prime of x is equal to zero. So notice if the function is called g, then the derivative will be g prime of x. And then number three, let's say the function is y equals pi. Again, pi is just a number. It's approximately 3.14. So the derivative y prime is zero. So how does this relate with what we were talking about previously with slope of the tangent line or slope of a curve? Well, if the derivative is zero, no matter what the x value is, the derivative is zero, that means the slope of the tangent line is zero for all x values. So the constant function rule is very easy to use. Now we're going to talk about how do you take the derivative for functions that are of this form. So f of x equals x to the n, where n is a real number. So the x is the variable, n is a number that's the exponent. Functions of this form are called power functions. So the definition of the derivative and a four-step process, so the one we used in the previous video, can be used to find the derivative of these types of functions. So the power rule says this. So this is how you take derivatives of power functions. If f of x is x to the n, a power function, where n is a real number, the derivative f prime of x is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. So what this differentiation rule states is that if you take the derivative of a power function x to the n, you bring the exponent n down. So that's what we did. The n was the original exponent for the power function. You bring the exponent down to the front and make it a coefficient. And then you keep the x, the variable, but then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So the original exponent was n, which is a number. You subtract 1 in the exponent, and that's called the power rule. So example 2, differentiation of power functions. Find the derivative of the following functions. So number 1, let's say we start off with the function f of x equals x. So this is a power function. It's x to the first power. So the derivative would be f prime of x. You bring the exponent 1 down and make it a coefficient. You keep the x, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So it was 1, so 1 subtract 1. So you have 1 times x to the 0 power, and anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. So the derivative of f of x equals x is 1. Number 2, let's say you have the function g of x equals x to the 7th power. And so this is another power function. The derivative g prime of x is equal to, you bring the exponent down and make it a coefficient, so 7 times, you keep the x, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So x raised to the 7 minus 1 power. So 7 times x to the 6th power. And so 7x to the 6th is the derivative for this function g of x. Number 3. Let's say the function is h of x equals x to the negative 2. So this is a power function. Your exponent is a real number. It's negative 2 this time. 
So again, if you want to find the derivative, h prime of x, using the power rule, take the negative 2 and make it a coefficient. So you bring negative 2 to the front, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So you keep the x. It was negative 2, so you subtract 1 more. So you have negative 2 x to the negative 3 power. So the derivative is negative 2 x to the negative 3. So this is the derivative, h prime of x. So this answer is perfectly fine, but if you want to rewrite this so all the exponents are positive, Remember, if you have x raised to the negative power, it's really in the denominator. So you can rewrite this, keep the negative 2 in the numerator, but then bring x to the denominator and rewrite this with a positive exponent. So you can also have the derivative as negative 2 divided by x cubed. Either one of these is perfectly fine. So now number 4, let's say you have the function y equals x to the 3 halves power. So this time the power or the exponent is a fraction. It's still a power function because x is being raised to a real number. The derivative would be y prime, or if you want to use the Leibniz notation to be dy dx, as we saw in a previous section, the derivative would be, you bring the exponent, which was 3 halves, and make it the coefficient, so 3 halves, or 3 over 2, x, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So 3 halves, or 3 divided by 2, subtract 1. So now, we know that if we want to subtract, we need common denominators, so rewrite 1 as 2 divided by 2, so that way you have an LCD of 2, so 3 subtract 2 is 1, so you have 1 half in the exponent. So the derivative of y prime is 3 halves x to the 1 half power. So so far we've had the constant function rule, and now we've talked about the power rule. So let's talk about the next differentiation rule, which is called the constant multiple rule. So if f of x equals a constant, k, times a function, u of x, where k is the constant, the derivative rule says this, f prime of x is equal to you keep the constant k, but you can take the derivative of the function. So k times the derivative of u. So this differentiation rule states that if you want to take the derivative of a constant multiple, so if you have a function times a constant, you bring out the constant. In other words, you keep the constant, and you multiply by the derivative of the remaining function. Example 3. Differentiation of a constant times a function. Find the derivative of the following functions. So this time we're going to have a constant times a function, and we're going to find the derivative of the using the constant multiple rule. So number one, f of x equals five times x to the seventh. Notice it's not just x to the seventh. It's not just a power function. It's a constant times a power function. So f prime of x is, you keep the constant five, but you take the derivative of the power function. So this d dx means take the derivative or differentiate this power function. So what is the derivative of x to the seventh? We did that in the previous example. You keep the five that we had earlier, you bring the exponent down, which is 7, x, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So you have 5 times 7, x to the 6th. Or, if you simplify completely, 5 times 7 is 35. 35, x to the 6th is the derivative of f of x. Number 2, g of x equals 4x to the negative 3. So again, you have a constant 4, and you have a power function, x to the negative 3. So let's take the derivative. g prime of x is equal to, you keep the constant 4, and you take the derivative, so d dx again, of the power function, x to the negative 3. So you bring the negative 3 down to, co to make it a coefficient, 4 times negative 3, and then make sure you always subtract 1 from the exponent when you take the derivative of a power function. So keep x, and then the exponent becomes negative 3 minus 1. So 4 times negative 3, x to the negative 4 power, and now just clean up by multiplying the coefficients. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, x to the negative 4. So just like in the previous example, this answer is perfectly fine with a negative exponent, but let's say you want to rewrite this so you have a positive exponent. You keep the negative 12 in the numerator, the x the negative 4. So it has a negative exponent, move it to the denominator, and rewrite it so it has a positive exponent. So negative 12 divided by x to the fourth, or negative 12 x to the negative 4, these are the same. So that's what g prime of x is equal to. Number three, h of x equals 1 divided by 3x to the third power. So this time, it doesn't look like what we've had in the previous examples. You have 1 divided by 3, and the x to the power is actually in the denominator. So we've seen this in the last couple examples, that you can rewrite this so you have a power function. You have 1 third, that's the fraction, the constant, but then you have x to the third power in the denominator. Bring the x to the numerator and rewrite it with the opposite sign. So x cubed in the denominator is really x to the negative 3 in the numerator. So this function, we're just rewriting it. We haven't actually taken the derivative yet. The function is 1 third x to the negative 3. Now notice that this is a power function. You have a constant times x to the negative 3, 
the derivative of h prime of x is equal to, keep the constant, 1 third, and now take the derivative of the power function, x to negative 3, keep the constant, 1 third, bring the exponent down, negative 3 out in front, x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, negative 3 subtract 1, so 1 third times negative 3, x to negative 4, and now notice if you take 1 third times negative 3, you get negative 1, so negative x to negative 4, or again, if you want to rewrite this so it has a positive exponent, it's negative 1 divided by x to the positive 4 exponent. Number 4, y equals negative 4 divided by the cube root of x. So again, it doesn't look like a power function, so we need to rewrite this so it does. So notice you have a negative 4 in the numerator. Rewrite the radical function as a fraction exponent. So if you have the cube root of x, the x is raised to the first power on the inside of the radical, so you rewrite this as x to the one-third power. So whatever type of root you have, that's the denominator. And whatever power of x you have, that makes up the numerator. So this function, just rewriting it, is negative 4 divided by x to the one-third. But again, this is just like the last problem. You have x to a power in the denominator. You need to rewrite this so you have x to the power in the numerator. So negative 4 is already in the numerator. Bring this x to the one-third up. So it makes it x to the negative one-third power. So again, this is what y is equal to. It's negative 4, x to the negative one-third. So now it looks like a constant times the power function. So now we're ready to take the derivative. y prime, or again, dy dx, if you want to use Leibniz notation. Keep the negative 4, the constant, and now take the derivative, d dx, of the power function. So bring the exponent down. So negative 4 times negative one-third, when you bring the exponent down, Subtract 1 from the exponent. So negative 4 times negative 1 third. X to the negative 1 third minus 1 in the exponent. And again, if you want to subtract the exponents, you need common denominators. So rewrite this so the denominator is 3. So y prime is negative 4 times negative 1 third. X to the power negative 1 third. Subtract, rewrite 1, so it's 3 divided by 3. And now simplify. You have negative 4 times negative 1 third. Negative one-third, subtract three divided by three is negative four-thirds. And now simplify by multiplying the coefficients. Negative four times negative one-third is positive four-thirds, x to negative four-thirds power. So this is what y prime is equal to, four-thirds, x to the negative four-thirds. So this example gives you an idea of how to use the constant multiple rule or constant multiple property if you have a constant times a function. You keep the constant and you take the derivative of the remaining function. Okay, so the last rules that we're going to talk about in this video are called the sum and difference rules. So this is going to help us find out how to take the derivative of a sum or a difference of two or more functions. So if f of x is equal to one function plus or minus another function, so you have one function plus another function or one function subtract another function, u of x and v of x are differentiable functions. That means you can take the derivative of u and you can take the derivative of v. That's important. If you can't take the derivative of u or v, then you can't take the derivative of the sum or the difference. So the rule says f prime of x is equal to just what you would hope. You can take the derivative of each one, u prime and v prime, and you keep the sign between the two. This differentiation rule states that when we take the derivative of a sum or a difference of two functions that you can take the derivative of, we can find the sum or the difference by taking the derivative of each one and then adding or subtracting them. So example four, differentiation of a sum and a difference. Find the derivative of the following functions. Number one, f of x equals, you have this polynomial function. So the sum and difference rule can help us find the derivative of polynomials now. f of x is equal to 17x squared, subtract 33x plus 12. So the derivative rule says you can take the derivative of each term separately. So f prime of x is equal to, well, notice 17x squared. That's what we just finished up with in the last example. It's a constant times the power function. So keep 17 as the constant. What's the derivative of x squared? Well, you bring the exponent down, you keep the x, and you subtract 1 from the exponent. So 17 times 2, x to the 2 minus 1 power. Keep the sign between the two derivatives. The derivative of 33x, 33 is a constant, so keep it. What's the derivative of x? We did this earlier. If you take the derivative of x, you take the exponent 1 down, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So you have x to the 1 minus 1 power. What's the derivative of, of just a constant? 
like 12. It's 0. So the derivative of 12 is 0. And now just simplify. 17 times 2 gives you 34. This x is raised to the first power now after you subtract 1 from the exponent. Subtract 33x to the 0. And then the 0 just disappears. And then we know that x to the 0 power is 1. So this is 34x minus 33 times 1, or 34x subtract 33. That's the derivative of f. All right, number 2. g of x equals 6x to the third power plus 2 divided by x to the fourth. So again, notice that you have the first term and you have the second term. The first term is fine. It's a constant times a power function. But the second term is not. You need to rewrite this so that the x is actually in the numerator. So if you have x to the fourth in the denominator, rewrite it first before you start taking derivatives. x to the fourth in the denominator means you have 2x to the negative 4 in the numerator. So the derivative is g prime of x equals, keep the constant 6, take the derivative of x to the third, bring the exponent down, 3, x to the 3 minus 1 power after you take the derivative of the power function, plus 2 is a constant, so keep it. What's the derivative of x to the negative 4? You bring negative 4 down, just to make it a coefficient, and then keep the x and subtract 1 from the exponent. So negative 4 minus 1. So now the rest is just simplifying. 6 times 3 gives you 18. This will be x to the second power. And then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And this becomes x to the negative 5 in the exponent. So 18x squared subtract 8x to the negative 5. That's the derivative of g. And if you want to rewrite this, you have positive exponents. Notice that 18x squared is already fine because the 2 is already positive, so keep it the same. The negative 8 stays in the numerator, and then you have x and negative 5. That can be brought down to the denominator to make it a positive exponent. So you can also have 18x squared subtract 8 divided by x to the fifth. So again, either one of these is perfectly fine as the answer. Number 3. Let's say you have the function h of x equals 10x to the negative 3 subtract 3 times the square root of x. So again, we don't know how to take the derivative of a radical function. We need to rewrite it. So 10x to negative 3 is perfectly fine. It's a constant times a power function. Keep the negative 3 as the constant. What is the power if you have the square root of x? The x is raised to the first power. And if you have no type of number on the root, it's a square root. So you have 2 in the denominator. So this is minus 3x to the half power. So now we're ready to take the derivative. h prime of x is equal to Keep the constant 10, take the derivative of x to the negative 3. So bring the negative 3 down, make it a coefficient. x stays, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. Negative 3 subtract 1. And now the other term, keep the sign between them. Keep the 3, the constant. Bring the exponent on the x down to make it a coefficient. 1 half, x, and then you have 1 half, subtract 1 in the exponent. So we're finished taking derivatives, now the rest is just simplifying. You have 10 times negative 3, that's negative 30. You have x to the negative 4 exponent. Negative 3 times 1 half, that's negative 3 halves. And now how do you subtract? So now figure out what the exponent is on the x. You have x to the 1 half subtract 1 is 2 divided by 2, so that way you have a common denominator. So negative 30, x to negative 4 is perfectly fine. Negative 3 halves x to the 1 half subtract 2 over 2 is negative a half. And so this is the derivative. Negative 30 x to the negative 4 subtract 3 halves x to the negative half power. So that's h prime of x. Or again, if you want to rewrite this with positive exponents, you can take the negative 30 and leave it in the numerator. Take the x to the negative 4 and bring it down to the denominator with a positive exponent. Minus, keep the 3 halves, the 3 is in the numerator and 2 is in the denominator, bring the x, since it has a negative exponent, you can bring this x to negative half down to make it x to the positive half. Okay, one more, number 4, using the sum and difference rules. You have y equals 4x cubed subtract 2x squared subtract 10 in the numerator, and you have x in the denominator. Well, we've never seen how to take the derivative of this type of function yet. Okay, one way to rewrite this is that notice there are three terms in the numerator, and they're all divided by x. So rewrite this using three separate fractions. First fraction is 4x cubed divided by x. Subtract, keep the sign between them. The next fraction is 2x squared divided by x. And then subtract again. 10 over x is the last fraction. 
So if you ever have a fraction where you only have one term in the denominator, rewrite this so that all of them have x in the denominator and each term in the numerator makes the fractions. So we're going to do a little bit more simplifying before we start taking the derivative. The x cubed divided by x is just x squared, so 4x squared minus the second fraction, the x squared divided by x is just x, so 2x, and the third fraction stays the same. Nothing cancels. You have minus 10 divided by x. So again, we're not ready to take the derivative yet because not all the x's are in the numerator. 4x squared, it's perfectly fine. Minus 2x, that's fine. But this last fraction has x in the denominator. Bring this x up to the numerator and change the sign on the exponent. So 4x squared minus 2x minus 10, x to the negative 1. So now we're ready to take the derivative. y prime, or dy dx, equals 4 times, keep the constant 4, what's the derivative of x squared? It's 2, taking the exponent and making a coefficient, x to the 2 minus 1 power. How do you take the derivative of negative 2x? You keep the sign, negative. You take the coefficient 2, and you keep it. And now you take the derivative of x. The derivative of x, you take the coefficient down to the front, that's 1. And then keep x, subtract 1 from the exponent. 1, subtract 1. And then the last term, keep the sign between them. Keep the coefficient, or the constant, 10. The derivative of x to negative 1, take negative 1 to the front, keep the x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, which was negative 1, and then subtract 1 again. So now simplify. 4 times 2 gives you 8. This is x to the first power now. Subtract 2, x to the 0 power. And then negative 10 times negative 1 makes it positive 10, x to the negative 2. And we know that x to the 0 is 1, so 8x minus 2 times 1, plus 10x to the negative 2. And then just simplify, 8x, 2 times 1 is 2, so 8x minus 2, and that last term is 10x to the negative 2. And again, if you want to rewrite this with positive exponents, the first two terms are fine, 8x minus 2, and the last term, 10, keep it in the numerator, x to the negative 2, bring it down, so it has x squared in the denominator. And so y prime is 8x subtract 2 plus 10 divided by x squared. So let's finish up this video by using all the differentiation rules in one problem. So note that we can take the derivative of a function with respect to some independent variable. It doesn't actually matter what that variable is. We've always had in the last few examples as the variable x, but it doesn't have to be x. We know that the variable can be anything. It could be variable t, it could be p, it could be w. So often the independent variable is x. But even if the function is dependent on a variable other than x, say, say the variable is w, then you can take the derivative with respect to w. The differentiation rules still apply exactly as we have been using them. It's just the only thing is the variable is w instead of x. So example 5. Differentiation rules. Find the derivative of the following functions. Number 1, g of w, so the variable is w, equals 2.8w to the sixth. Subtract 3 divided by 5w squared in the denominator plus 4.7. So we know we have to rewrite the function first so we can use the differentiation rules. The first term is fine, 2.8w to the sixth minus, now notice you have 3 fifths as the fraction, but then this w squared needs to be moved to the numerator to make it w to the negative 2, and then you have 4.7. So now we're ready to take the derivative, g prime of w, so capital G prime of W this time. 2.8 is the coefficient or the constant, keep it. Bring the six, the exponent, down using the power rule. Six W will be six minus one in the exponent now. Minus constant three fifths, keep it. And now use the power rule again. W to the negative two, bring the negative two down. So negative two, W to the negative two minus one. When you use the power rule, subtract one from the exponent. And we know the constant rule is the derivative of a real number, like a 4.7, is 0. So we've taken the derivative. Now just simplify. 2.8 times 6 will give you 16.8. And this will be w to the fifth. And then negative 3 fifths times negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6 divided by 5. And then this will be w to the negative 3. And if you want to rewrite this with positive exponents, 16.8 w to the fifth plus 6 in the numerator, 5 in the denominator already, and you're moving this w to negative 3 to the denominator to make it a positive exponent. 
So you can also have 16.8 w to the fifth plus 6 divided by 5 w to the third. And then number 2, y equals 7 t to the eighth, so the variable is t this time. Subtract 5 t to negative 1 plus 6 times the fourth root of t cubed plus 4. So we have a radical. We need to rewrite this so it has a fraction power. 7 t to the eighth is fine. Minus 5 t to negative 1, that's fine. But this third term needs to be rewritten. The coefficient is 6. Now if you have the fourth root, we know that it will be a fraction power with 4 in the denominator, but then you have 3 on the t on the inside of the radical. So the 3 is the numerator of the fraction. So keep the t, and it makes it 3 fourths power plus 4. So now we're ready to take the derivative. y prime is equal to 7 is the coefficient or the constant. Keep it. The derivative of t to the 8th, use the power rule. 8 comes down to a coefficient, t to the 8 minus 1 power. Keep the sign between them. 5 is, is a constant. Keep it. Use the power rule on t to the negative 1. So negative 1 comes down, makes it a coefficient. t to the negative 1 minus 1 plus 6 is a coefficient or constant. Keep it. Now use the power rule on t to the 3 fourths. Bring the 3 fourths down and then subtract 1 from the exponent, t to the 3 fourths minus 1. And the derivative of 4 is 0. Now simplify. y prime equals 7 times 8 is 56, t to the 7th power. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5, t to negative 2. And then 6 times 3 fourths, 6 times 3 is 18, divide by 4. So common denominators before you can subtract the fractions in the exponent. t to the 3 fourths, subtract 1, is 4 divided by 4 and the plus zero just disappears. So 56t to the seventh, 5t to negative two stays the same, but then 18 divided by four, we know simplifies to nine divided by two because there's a two in common with 18 and four, and then t to the three fourths subtract four over four is negative one fourth power. You can have this as the answer, or if you want to rewrite it, so you can have this last term with t to negative one fourth in the denominator. So keep nine in the numerator, 2 is already in the denominator, and then you have this t to negative 1 fourth, and you can bring it down and make it t to the positive 1 fourth in the denominator. So this is what y prime is equal to. So this is a good place to stop our video before we start talking about applications of derivatives. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about application problems involving the derivative using basic differentiation rules.